this is a, a SFA ACM, and we have a, a talk as AI trust adversarial attacks on AI ML models and the defenses against attacks. Uh, Mr. Matak is a principal manager at Microsoft in Azure Core Operating System and the Security. And he has been uh, speakers for us before on advanced topics. And today he's talking about this uh, security issues. And let's introduce our own uh, chapters. We founded in 1957, promote knowledge of modern computing, create a community, support networking and hiring. We only charge $20 annual membership and we have uh, upcoming talks on meetups and and we have uh, um, 185 past talks on YouTube as uh, our own library connected to all the other ACM um, more advanced uh, talks. Uh, we have monthly meetings and general computing typically on third Wednesdays of the month and the data science SIG, uh, SIG meetups typically on fourth Monday of the month. We do networking job announcement and we joined Meet, we have joint meetings scheduled with other IEEE societies and the Valley ML.AI. Okay, the upcoming uh, webinars, we have a deep dive into AI and the deep learning infrastructure with the Lambda Labs, and which is on Monday, um, March 22nd, next week. Wednesday on April 21st, Licensing and opportunities in large scale the networks and the smart healthy applications. Uh, this is just regular, uh, regular uh, advice on how to use the Q and A's in the Zoom for questions to the speaker. Thank you. So thanks, uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining today. Uh, so we, I'm going to talk about um, uh, AI trust. Uh, which is uh, quite of uh, quite a talk of the town these days, and uh, because um, from several accounts, a lot of mission critical AI models are stalled right now because of the uh, because of the trust issues on the AI and the, the deep fakes and uh, all the other uh, prevalent uh, AI modification, the poison attacks and adversarial attacks are quite common these days uh, in the industry. So um, at Microsoft, we, are, we, take the, we take the AI from the responsible point of view and uh, not just responsibility with respect to um, the security, but also from the environmental point of view, right? Like how much uh, greenhouse gases are emitted of training those large uh, transformer models and other models that, uh, that are being trained right now. So adversarial attacks on AI ML models and defensive against attacks. So this is quite a, a quite an interesting topic. Um, I started uh, learning AI many years back and uh, the adversarial attacks were introduced to me uh, when I attended a conference uh, at Google in 2016, uh, where Dr. Dr. Hinton was giving a talk. And uh, he started his talk by saying that, hey, convolution models are broken and we have to rethink. And that's when he introduced this uh, capsule networks and adversarial attacks and defenses. But I'm Bharav Mehta, I've been, uh, uh, I've been uh, in the Bay Area for the last uh, 15 years. But before that, um, uh, you know, um, I, I worked in auto industry and uh, other companies um, outside of Bay Area. So at, in the Bay Area, I worked at Qualcomm, um, at Apple, I was there for 11 years. And then last year or so, I joined Microsoft in the Azure Core Operating System team. Um, I build uh, AI security tools, and also I build uh, tools around hyper-personalization uh, for security. And, um, and again, uh, the Azure Incident Management System and uh, tools around that. So we call our teams as enterprise and security inside the core operating systems and intelligent edge. Um, uh, I am an academician, I, I never leave school. I'm always in school doing some course or other. I recently graduated from a, with a graduate degree in computer science from Georgia Tech. Um, my other degrees are from Cornell University, Queen's University in Canada, and uh, RIT in Rochester, New York, and Mumbai University in Mumbai. Um, I'm, a, <clears throat> um, um, I'm a social worker here in the Bay Area. I, I, I teach uh, students 
for the last five years, I've been teaching uh, emerging technologies to students in the Bay Area, uh, and uh, it's quite an enriching experience. So I continue to do that. Um, I founded a startup called Erudition, uh, where I uh, host events on weekends and I provide training in uh, emerging technologies like AI, ML, uh, deep learning, um, and security, uh, cyber security, um, also in uh, IoT and uh, uh, quantum computing and Kubernetes cloud computing. Um, so what is the AI threat model today, right? So um, AI threat model, if you look at the who's and the why's and the how's, um, like who are impacted and who are uh, the uh, who are the perpetrators, right? So then you have the research engineers, white hat uh, hackers, uh, pen testers, a red team uh, who are trying to thwart those attacks, activists, um, black hat, uh, blue hat, gray hat, uh, organized black hat, uh, state-sponsored black hat, you know, so you have all these AI threat uh, that's happening. And in many cases, uh, we don't even realize that uh, we are being attacked. Uh, and uh, you see that, uh, you see that impact, right? So goal is integrity and availability, uh, confidentiality and information security. So that's your goal, right? Why are we doing this, right? Uh, why will they attack you, right? Uh, they want to uh, you know, thwart. Motivation is for research, for bounty, for financial reward, for cyber warfare. And uh, especially when AI is being deployed almost on every aspect of our life these days, including the self-driving car and other, other areas uh, of our work and play, uh, it's becoming more and more prevalent um, uh, to, to make, uh, you know, to keep this in, into account, right? So you have the CIA triad, um, it's confidentiality, integrity, availability. And how they do it is the timing or inference. Uh, they change uh, the, the train, they, they attack at the training time or they attack at the inference time. So the training time attacks are usually white box attacks where uh, it's a most, more like an insider threat. These days, 80% of attacks are happening in, inside the threat. And then you have the inference time attacks that are more around when, uh, when the model is being uh, the, when, when the model is being uh, inferred. So uh, that's a black box attack where, you, where the attacker doesn't have access to the model, but they are able to do a query based or an evasion type of attacks. Capability is white, black, or gray box attack. Uh, limitations are distance, domain, functionality, retraining, alternatives, uh, those are limitations, okay? So this is a yeah, classic training uh, and testing pipeline uh, of machine learning. And then you have the uh, feeds, uh, you know, um, the training data feeds into machine learning algorithm. The attack happens at the training influence, retraining data at data time, right? Uh, and then you have the black box attacks happening at the inference time uh, where we inject modified input into the model and uh, query, you know, query based attacks or boundary attacks. Um, there are pillars of security in context of AI ML. So you may have interact integrity attacks like source target misclassification, targeted misclassification, confidence reduction, or you have an avail availability attack, which is take down ML system, uh, denial of service attack, or corrupt training uh, data such that ML model is useless, or confidentiality attack, you know, extract sensitive information, infer data points. Uh, hospital discharge and those type of examples, right? Those are confidentiality attacks. So uh, there are two personas here. One is a solution operator and then the solution builder, right? So a solution operator, I want my customer data protected. I want trust the model inference. I want to know about the attacks on the model. And uh, the solution builders are, I want my IP protected. I want my critical data protected. I want my model to be trustworthy, right? So that's the solution builder point of view that I don't want, uh, you know, um, I don't want my IP to get, uh, you know, uh, uh, attacked, right? I don't want my critical data uh, to be attacked or uh, taken away from me. Um, from the data scientist perspective, you know, I want my customer data protected. I want, I want to trust the model and I want to know, know about the attacks on the model. And uh, you know you have the trusted hardware operating system, compliant devices, the device security posture. You have the trust AI ML edge containers uh, because edge is the future. Uh, in few years, uh, more, more than 90% of compute will happen on the edge. That's a trust score. 
uh, that we are going to talk about the robustness score and the trust score, like how how trusty how trustworthy the AI ML model is, and also you have uh, you have mitigations. You know, we want to allow and block access. We want to like we deploy containers, run containers. There's a dynamic control uh, with respect to the cloud and also uh, from the container. That's from the mitigation perspective. Once you know that you are being attacked. Uh, how are you going to mitigate, right? You're going to defend the attack. Also, you're going to block access or, um, uh, you know, uh, other controls you can provide. Uh, so you have a device builder. My device provides optimal hardware and secure, well-configured operating system. So what are we going to talk about today? So our, our talk today, we are going to talk about responsible AI that requires reliable users. Uh, must know how much to trust AI ML decisions, right? That's a responsible AI, it's a reliable AI, right? So because uh, that's a big discussion these days uh, with explainable AI uh, being, being uh, products being out there from IBM, from all the big leaders, uh, they have responsible AI or explainable AI prop, uh, models so that uh, the results, uh, AI is just not a black box, but you are able to go in and see what is going on and uh, why a given response is being registered. The AI machine learning models have unique security challenges. Um, you can learn how a model thinks by talking to it, right? Like a query based attacks. Um, AI ML can be tricked into making bad inferences and a robust model will resist being tricked. Okay, so that's the goal of our talk today. Like how do we improve robustness? How do you quantify robustness? How do you improve trust in your model? A robustness score is how resistant the model is being tricked to be being tricked, right? So, so it's just not about training a model, but about how we can how we can train the models such that uh, it cannot be attacked easily, right? So it's robust against attack and adversarial attack, where a dog can be called a cat or um, a person's identity can be uh, can be uh, compromised. So the background is responsible AI encompasses these principles, fairness, inclusiveness, reliability, safety, transparency, accountability, privacy, security, right? So these are some of the uh, information that's uh, around responsible AI, like around fairness, inclusiveness, reliability, safety, you know, transparency, accountability, privacy, security. Without model robustness, we cannot guarantee any of them, right? Uh, if, the, if the model is not trustworthy, you cannot uh, have any of them. So customers uh, need to know AI ML fitness for purpose, need an understandable score for AI robustness, must be meaningful in real world. We need, to, we need tools to measure and report AI robustness, need to tell ourselves and our customers where we stand, must account for known state of art attacks, and also should enable making models more robust. So what is an adversarial attack? Adversarial attack is a technique that attempts to fool ML models and cause model to make a mistake. Okay, that's on the layman term. This is what um, an uh, adversarial attack is all about. A high threat scenario is email spam filters, self-driving cars, computer security. All of that can be compromised with adversarial attacks. So let's say it's a cat uh, image here. Um, I, can, I can put an adversarial attack on it. I can do a uh, I can do a square attack or a hop, skip, jump attack, or I can do a, a boundary attack, or I can do an evasion attack. You know, these are some names of the attack uh, that, that are popular out there. Uh, there are more um, advanced attacks that, that are being developed these days, where just by making a small modifications uh, to this image, uh, you can make it look like a dog. So this is uh, look like a dog, right? So the both images look the same in your, to your eyes, but uh, what is in reality going on is that um, this image is uh, adversarially attacked. So to human eye, it looks the same, but if you look very, very closely, few pixels are changed. And just for the fact that you have changed few pixels, you have changed the inference uh, of, the, of the machine learning model, which we have not modified the model. We have just done a black box attack where you are just querying and modifying your query a um, uh, little bit, every more of a generative model. So you're modifying your query um, uh, and continue to uh, adversarially modify your, your samples that you are querying with 
to give different response. So responsible AI, as I said earlier, it has robustness, explainability, and fairness. So robustness is the AI robust to attacks. Explainability is understanding reasoning behind each decision. And fairness is, is the system fair to all users, right? So that's the, uh, these are the three considerations you have. And AI is a black box after all, right? And we are gonna focus on robustness. So if I look at the NIST, you know, NIST is a, is a standard out there in, um, uh, in, in, uh, in, in measurement, right? So, and it, they, are, they are doing a lot of work in standardizing AI-based uh, methods. And uh, what, what the NIST document is saying that this is the landscape of um, AI threat, uh, AI ML threat, right? So you have adversarial machine learning, so it starts with targets, you have physical domain, digital representation, you have machine learning models, you have supervised uh, learning, you have unsupervised learning, you have reinfor reinforcement learning. So these are all the models that are target models that can be attacked. These are just different types of them. Then you have techniques, you have training, like you can do poisoning attack, you can do data injection attack, you can do data manipulation attack. These are all poisoning attacks, label manipulation, you can do um, uh, input manipulation, you can do logical corruption. Uh, then you have testing methods like evasion, Oracle, gradient-based, uh, gradient-free extraction, inversion, membership inference. And then you have a knowledge of black box, gray box, white box, samples, Oracle, model architecture, parameter values, training method, loss function, training data, all these are knowledge-based uh, attacks, right? So then you have the black box attack, then you have a gray box attack where you have, where you attack the model architecture, parameter values, training methods, training data itself. And then you have a white box attack where you have access to the training data, the model and the environment. And then there's a whole concept of overwatch in security, um, right? Uh, where the overwatch is all about, um, are we able to monitor the queries being sent to my model, right? And I'm able to check that and uh, see if there's a given order of, um, or given uh, sequence or progression of images or queries being sent to my model. And uh, if I see any systematic, um, you know, um, evasion or systematic um, pattern of inputs going through, then I'm gonna alarm and uh, do that. So there are a lot of blockchain based applications of uh, detecting overwatch. Uh, or setting up overwatch. And then from the defensive side, you have defense against training attacks. You have uh, robust stati robustness statistics, data sanitization. You have um, uh, defenses against testing, which is robustness improvement, uh, differential privacy, homomorphic encryption. And then you have consequences of integrity violation, uh, confidence reduction, misclassification, targeted, targeted misclassification, or source target misclassification or you have availability violation, or you have a confidential violation, privacy violation. So those are some of the landscape of adversarial machine learning out there based on uh, the National Institute of um, Standards. Uh, so this is the adversarial threat model. You have attack types, you have adversarial knowledge, you have adversarial specificity, you have adversarial falsification and attack frequency, right? So you can have multiple attacks like iterative query-based attacks, or you can have an adversarial falsification to make the inference false positive or false negative. Uh, the adversarial knowledge can be a black box. Uh, that is, you don't have access to the model, white box, you have access to the model and training data. And gray box is more around your partial knowledge. And the, you can have a targeted attack where you want, to, you want uh, the cat to look like a dog or you can have an untargeted attack where you want a cat to look like not cat. It can be a bird, it can be look like a car, it can look like a cow or whatever else, right? So that's a non-targeted attack. And then attack types, you can have a specific attack or a security violation or influence type of attacks type. So what is a white box attack? A white box attack is um, like some of the type, uh, types are FGSM, right? Or Carnegie Wagner CNW or a BIM attack. Uh, white box attacks are, are, are relatively difficult because you, 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 you have to have access to the data, you have access to the ML model, 
able to calculate the DL by DX, the gradient. Um, idea of perturbing the input is a way that maxima maximally changes the loss function of the model. Uh, in the neural network, this means that we need to perform black back propagation to calculate the derivative of the loss function with respect to input. And then you have the black box attack where you don't have access to the ML model. You cannot calculate DL by DX. You cannot calculate the gradient. It relies on various ways of approximating how a model behaves, okay? So what you are looking at here is the uh, substitution attack where uh, slowly by querying uh, different uh, inputs, eventually you're gonna figure out what model is being used and then you can substitute that model with some other model that is of your, your knowledge, which will give you adversarial response. This is substitution attack. And the boundary attack is more generative. So you are modifying your input to the, uh, to the model, right? There's a bank of noise. So you're gonna putting the noise uh, to the input and you are throwing it to the AI model and you're gonna start seeing uh, a fish look like a cat, right? So, uh, so that is the uh, boundary attack, like a black box attack, right? Uh, so that is the, these are the two big types of uh, AI ML attacks available out there. So this is a, uh, this is a standard uh, FER 2013 uh, celebrity detection model for exception emotion classification. And, uh, and here you are seeing um, uh, an image. It's an original image. Um, it's uh, uh, the, the, the emotion here, sentiment model. The, this is a Kaggle FER 2013 data set. And we have trained this emotion detection model here. And here it's saying it's happy. And then we modified this, uh, we modified this uh, uh, with FGSM attack and you see this, this same image with some modification, we can't even detect where the pixels were changed. And now it's saying it's anger, uh, anger, right? And then this is another attack, CNW attack. This is a white box attack. So uh, you can see here, uh, you have access to the full model, the data set, you have access to all the other information and then you have the Carlini Wagner, uh, which is also showing anger, right? This is a targeted attack. And then you have a PGD attack, right? Which is also anger attack. And then you have a special smoothing defense where you are smoothing the features uh, where you see like very clear uh, smoothing going on uh, to your, uh, to your uh, model, right? And this is a special smoothing where you are able to successfully defend uh, the, the model, right? And uh, you are able to uh, clearly see here the, uh, the smoothing defense happening and uh, you are able to turn it back to happiness, okay? But all defenses don't always work. So you, are, you have this anger and sad. So you are seeing that even after defense, which is quite, uh, which is quite uh, prevalent here, you are able to uh, show that uh, the defense is not working, right? So defense doesn't always work. Um, so uh, then the next slide is uh, we are, we have the unicycle, um, just a second. Um, so you have the, uh, you have the original image, right? Which is a mountain bike detected here. And, uh, and what you are seeing here is a loss gradient, right? So loss gradient of the classifier. And what you are seeing here is an attack. It's a PGD attack where, where this unicycle, the mountain bike is, uh, is identified as a black swan, okay? Or a Cygnus atretus. So you are seeing a, 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 you are seeing a targeted attack, an untargeted attack here on this model with some loss gradient calculated that's a DL by DX. And you are seeing the attack uh, happen here, okay? Uh, then you add some perturbations, that's for the defense, and uh, you're able to defend this model um, with, with the, uh, and, and you're able to uh, bring it back to being uh, a monocycle, unicycle, okay? So you are seeing the original image with the ResNet 50 model, and you are seeing uh, the attack happen, right, where the, uh, the response has changed. And this is another, another white box attack here, okay? A quick question. Yes. On the added perturbation, how does that uh, apply a defense? I mean, what is the strategy or how do you calculate the perturbation? 
Okay. Yeah, so that is uh, using, there are several methods. Here we are doing special smoothing, right? Um, so you, you're adding, you're calculating this perturbation, right? Uh, on, your, on your original image, right? And then you are applying special smoothing, right? Uh, so that is uh, giving you, uh, you're defending uh, this, uh, this model against this attack and you're bringing it back to what it's supposed to do. This is another adaptive, this is the, um, uh, now the defense is getting attacked, right? So, so now there can be a counter attack on defense and now you are, you are bringing it back to black swan, as you can see. So you can, uh, you can continue to attack and counter attack um, and defend and then counter attack and there are possibilities of counter attack also, okay? So I'll go through a demo in a moment uh, that well, I will be able to show you the uh, stages of this perturbation quantification. So you can see uh, how it's calculated. So, um, so basically, how do you score um, uh, uh, AI ML model. So it can be an empirical model. So empirical model is like a honey pot strategy. Um, so you can imagine uh, a model getting attacked uh, from all, all, all different ways, right? So you can have 20, 30, 50 different ways your model can be attacked and you can set up a grid uh, search and you can continue to attack the model with all these different methods. Uh, so you provide a metric to capture if AI solution produce reliable and consistent outcomes. So your numerator is your attempts and denominator is uh, uh, total number of attempts and the numerator is number of uh, attacks that are successful and the de denominator is the number of attempts you are making. So, so attack a model with a set of attacks, record percentage of samples for which all attacks failed. Example is robustness accuracy and robust bench, okay? That's the robust, robustness um, uh, score, you can say. Then there's a clever score, which is from IBM, uh, which is a theoretical approach. We analyze the network, provide the guarantee that an attack would require at least a uh, uh, DEVA uh, amount of um, uh, noise. And then you can, you can calculate the clever score based on that. So that's a theoretical approach. Uh, how do you defend against these models, right? Mainly the black box model, that's what I'm gonna talk about. So you can have adversarial training defense methods where you are adversarially training the defense, uh, so adversarially training the model, right? So if you're add, adding noise, you generate adversarial examples, and then you retrain the, the, the model with adversarial samples. So, uh, I mean, I, I did some uh, training at Genentech a few years back and there, uh, we were we were we had very few samples, so we did augmentation of the image. So we we did the uh, Z noise. Um, uh, we need uh, we did uh, a flipping, reverse, mirror, uh, offset, and we were able to take thousand images and we could create fifty thousand images out of the thousand images. Similarly, here you can do those augmentation. You can uh, you can change. We call it barrage of random transform. Or, and you can add the adversarial, uh, uh, adversarial um, like, you know, generative adversarial um, information to the image, like adding more pixels, like what, how, would it, how would adversarial attack happen? So you can, you're gonna increase the number of samples being trained with all these adversarial details added to it. And now you're retraining the model. So like that's the adversarial training. Defense method used to increase adversarial robustness by retraining a model and adversarial examples. The other, other defense is uh, introducing robustness to mitigate against adversarial examples. Where you have input transformation and you are able to transform, like what I was telling you about the barrage of random transform, randomness can be introduced during the both training and inference time as a defense strategy. Randomization challenges the attacker when they're calculating the exact gradient that will lead to adversarial examples due to the stochasticity, right? So that's the another way of doing input transformation and adding randomness to mitigate against adversarial examples. And the last one is detect adversaries via classification. So given a set of clean and adversarial examples, this detection method aims to classify between non-adversarial and adversarial examples. This is done by training a classifier uh, whose objective is to differentiate between adversarial and non-adversarial inputs, right? So now you are 
Now you are uh, training a classifier with adversarial samples and the classifier is gonna detect, is this an attack or is it a real image, right? Uh, so you train a classifier whose objective is to differentiate between adversarial and non-adversarial inputs. So let's say uh, you have a more, you have an adversarial sample, uh, right? And then you have a preprocessor. We remove the adversarial noise from the input image. They, they call it feature distillation, uh, which gives the most promising results today. And then you have the trainer to generate adversarial samples and train the model to be robust against them. And then you have the post processor which limit the information provided to the adversary by omitting probability scores. So this is, um, this is the strategy to increase robustness of the model and uh, in, in, uh, like decrease the vulnerability of the model, right? So this is another one where you have strategies to increase robustness, the approach uh, that uh, we are uh, employing in a product we are building, and we are gonna open source this, um, open source this, um, uh, this package, we call it AI Defender package. Um, uh, very soon, we're gonna open source this package um, uh, from Microsoft where we are doing defense, which are inputs, and uh, you're most welcome to, uh, uh, you know, contribute to it. Uh, we are going to open source, and uh, we are also going to build a web page called robustai.org, where uh, all of you are most welcome to look at the repo, public repo, and contribute to it. And all of these uh, libraries will be introduced inside the Azure ML pipeline, so you'll be able to calculate robustness score of your model. Uh, on when you, whenever you build your uh, Azure ML pipeline. Uh, so defense is uh, your input, your pre-processing, your model adversarially trained model, your post-processing and the output, right? So that's a defense part of it. And then you have the adversarial training where you are inputting the training, we are generating adversarial samples, we optimize min-max loss, then adversarially trained model, you, you do the model evaluation, then you have the new training samples going through the same process. Okay, so that's your uh, approach of, of increasing robustness. So uh, we, are, uh, we are 40 minutes in, uh, so uh, we are gonna talk about demos now. So, so what I, before we go into the demos, I wanna take any questions as to the, uh, the audience may have. And at the same time, um, uh, this area is evolving. Um, every day we hear new attacks being developed. Uh, it's, not, it's just not for, not for images, it can be for the voice, it can be for the national, natural language processing the type of models, uh, it can be on tabular data even, uh, like uh, we are currently looking at like the malware detection um, models, right? Uh, being uh, that the hidden Marco models being attacked uh, by, uh, by poisoning, right? And other ways, right? So. Uh, the AI attacks are quite prevalent out there. Uh, we don't realize it, but it's quite prevalent out there, um, right? So this is an example of a passport image forgery scenario using black box attack. So matching two different individuals with one forged face image. If such an image is uh, embedded in an official identification document like a passport or ID card, uh, both subjects can use this document to verify its ownership. This allows to bring a forged face image into an official genuine identification document, just tricking the biometric verification system. So this is not a, a hypothetical example. This has happened uh, in the recent past. Uh, this is an example of a boundary attack where uh, you attack a celebrity recognition model called VGG16 face, trained at 10 classes. Uh, you run targeted black box boundary attack, that's IBM art full box attack. The modified image of Abigail Spencer, it's somewhat blur using full box. The model now predicts it's, it as Amir Khan, although to, the, to human, it's obvious this is Abigail, as this is a black box attack, the only query models, right? So 31,000 queries run to switch the classification from Abigail to Amir. Um, we use this uh, hardware to do it uh, on 12 hours to run this demo end to end, okay? So, so this is the demo here. I have just, uh, I, I'm not gonna show you for 12 hours. I'm just gonna show you for a few seconds. Uh, so here you can see the, um, uh, the model being run. Uh, you see the 10 classes here, and then uh, you are, you're seeing the model being trained. So we are creating the model training. So now this is um, the class. It's saying correctly Abigail Spencer, 
with 100% probability. Now we're going to run the um, uh, run the attack, uh, adversarial attack. And uh, once we run the adversarial attack, you're going to see the Abigail Spencer will be identified as um, as Amir Khan, uh, right? So you're going to see that. Uh, now we're going to pause the recording and then we'll start again. You see that with 99% uh, pro 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 uh, confidence, you are able to say um, this uh, image is Amir Khan. Well, it was uh, Abigail Spencer. And this is the transition of how um, the adversarial queries were being made. You start with two queries, number two, 143, 283, all the way to 17,000 queries, uh, how it's, it's modified, okay? So that is the uh, example of that, right? So this uh, second example here for the demo is um, uh, license plate. So this is quite, uh, this is, uh, quite interesting. So it's an evasion uh, like model stealing attack or evasion attack, model evasion attack where um, it's for the license plate, right? So for, if you look at California DMV, they use this model called uh, uh, license plate detect.com. They, they have a model running, it's, it's an SSD model, SSD2 model running there um, uh, on the uh, fast track cameras. So it detects your license plate. So this is recognized vehicle license plate in accurate and real time fashion is a realistic demand shared by automotive, automatic driving, highway management and monitoring at certain sites. So we developed the perturbation patch or mask that is placed in the background of the license plate that prevents license plate recognizer model from recognizing a license plate number. Um, or you can even uh, do a targeted attack and make it look like somebody else's license plate. And we are successfully able to attack production license plate recognizer system using black box attack. So this is an example of uh, three masks we are, we are put on the top of the license plate. So we show that the state of the art license plate recognizer is vulnerable to physical manufactured adversarial objects. We successfully lead the target model to neglect the existence of the perturbed license plate in different environments, revealing the threat of robust physical adversarial objects against current recognition system based on deep learning. So that's your license plate recognizer black box substitution attack. And we attack existing license plate recognizer used by police department in the California state fast track system, toll collection uh, system, the SCZ uh, or the SSD, YOLO, RTNN model. And this is how uh, it is done, right? So you, you have the perturbation, you have the mask, you have the license plate, um, right, uh, so you take the license plate first, you resize and place in places uh, in various background pictures with different angles in your different type of cars. You apply gamma correction, you train with SSD model, calculate the uh, SSD uh, loss function. Um, that's a perturbation you're gonna create and you put it on the uh, different type of mask. Like one is put on the side of the license plate, one is put in the background. And the other one, you are keeping the uh, the uh, uh, the license plate number without the background, and everything else is covered uh, with that patch. Uh, the the one uh, mask two is most successful. Mask one and three are moderately successful. Um, so this is the unicycle model that I showed you. Uh, this is a video here, so I'm going to show you this. So here uh, we what are doing here. Um, is, uh, we, we are, are going to show video. you the. Uh, this uh, particular model being run. The first one is, uh, is a unicycle monocycle, and uh, we're gonna load the prerequisites. Uh, we're gonna run the model. It's left inside the basic model and then right inside of the defended model. Okay, so uh, the basic model we're gonna run through, uh, load the image, and then uh, we are going to detect it as a unicycle. Uh, right, and then we load the ResNet classifier, which is a Microsoft ResNet 50 classifier. And we are going to show, okay, this is uh, detecting a unicycle, monocycle. But then um, we are going to see uh, that this model is getting attacked uh, after that. So you create adversarial samples and, uh, and then uh, you, are, um, you, are, you, are you are doing a targeted attack to make it look like a broccoli. Okay, so this person will look like a broccoli. So you are gonna see that uh, here, you're gonna do target label 937. It's a targeted attack and you see it's looking like a broccoli. Okay, and then uh, the right-hand side, and then you'll see the perturbations created. 
also in the bottom uh, uh, bottom uh, view graph. I'm not showing it very clearly here. And then uh, the right hand side is a defense with special smoothing, and uh, we are going to run the attack, run the defense against the attack, and make it look uh, like uh, a unicycle. Okay, so we're gonna put a special smoothing. So that's the uh, defense and attack. This is a white box attack. The previous one I showed you was a query based black box attack. Now this is a, a defense uh, on a real life image like a melanoma image. Uh, so this is original image, this is adversarial sample, uh, right? Uh, so you are creating, you're taking the image and now you are adversarially attack the image and now it's, it's showing the same image is shown as not melanoma. So to, attacking top 2% winning Kaggle cancer detection model, we use untargeted hop, skip, jump based uh, query efficient boundary attack, right? And on the cancer model, we are successfully able to attack the model and collect the statistics. And to defend against this attack, we enhance uh, the cancer model with barrage of random transform. Uh, we call it BART uh, defense technique and barrage the attacker with slew of random transforms. While each individual transform could be easily defeated, their combination would be difficult to circumvent. And we are successful in defending against attack using BART. So this is a video, um, uh, I hope it shows up. Uh, if it doesn't, then we we'll skip it. But uh, uh, it's basically, we are using this barrage of random transforms. This is a paper on the right hand side. And uh, uh, this is the Kaggle competition that we have attacked. Okay, so uh, let me see if it starts. There's some codec issue here. So uh, we're gonna skip it, but basically this demo shows um, the whole attack being, uh, being executed and then defense and side-by-side -side comparison of that, okay? Uh, so that is the uh, defense. Uh, there's a product out there uh, called uh, Cognitive Scale Certified Cortex. So this product uh, essentially have these textbook models like the income prediction from the lending tree. Then you have the um, uh, auto insurance claims property, uh, propensity to buy uh, or custom churn, disease prediction on Pima Indian data set. And uh, here you can see um, the scan list first where you can go to every data point in your, in your data and calculate uh, first you run various models first decision tree, logistic regression, others. And then you look at the decision tree, you look at the accuracy, 57%, where the contribution of um, is explainability, performance and robustness. And then you can, um, you can look at every data point and see which data point had most contribution to the, um, uh, to the performance, okay? Uh, and also you can look at, uh, you can evaluate uh, based on performance, explainability, robustness, and accuracy. And uh, you can look at uh, the uh, you can look at the uh, the uh, uh, radar diagram, right? And uh, you can see that where is it missing, right? What what uh, which model uh, is better coverage uh, across the four parameters? That is uh, performance, fairness, robustness and explainability. So you can create this uh, type of Venn diagram. So that is the uh, cognitive scale uh, product, right? So um, uh, this was the content I wanted to share. Um, we, are, we are also building um, a solution right now um, uh, that will be like free to, free to everyone. Uh, so we're gonna call it a robust AI um, uh, gamification where we'll put in uh, the endpoint uh, open for um, for users to use our service and calculate robustness score and also uh, defend their models to see uh, the models they are using in production today if they are vulnerable to black box attack, right? So, um, so then we will give you the robustness score and uh, we'll give you opportunity to defend against that attack. So we're gonna open source that, even the API like how old robot that came out from Microsoft many years back, um, uh, where you could upload your image and it will tell your age. Similarly, we'll, you can upload your ML model and we can tell you your, your robustness score and how you can defend against those attacks. Um, so this, this field is quite popular. We are gonna go into RSA conference and present our paper there. Um, uh, 
whenever there's a next RSA conference. So all of those things are coming up. Uh, we are excited to share it with the uh, community. And uh, once the uh, open source uh, web page uh, right now, uh, the one we have right now is on fairness, uh, fairlearn.org, which is also hosted by Microsoft. You're most welcome to be part of the community. Um, so this is the um, uh, this is the web page for uh, fairlearn um, fairlearn.org. This is the page uh, that you can see here. We have we have similar page like robust AI, and uh, we are going to have. Um, uh, the uh, uh, the you, you will have the package and we'll also have the API and uh, uh, GitHub repo for this. Okay, so yeah, any questions uh, you may have, uh, I'm open to uh, answering them. There's not questions from the audience. Oh, somebody asked, can you paste the link into the chat for the fairlearn.org or it may be interested in other uh, links as well. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, one question I have is, could some of this um, defensive training also help make the models more robust for unforeseen future circumstances? So uh, your not question outside, is of, uh, outside of adversarial attacks, but some of the processes you're talking about that are defense mechanisms like in the training to try and uh, defend it against adversarial track attacks, would that help? just have other side benefits, such as making the model more robust. Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, we have seen uh, improvement in accuracy of the model. We have seen, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you are able to um, have a larger uh, sample, right? Uh, I've also seen over time, uh, the training time has reduced. Um, uh, depending on the image size, definitely, but uh, you are going to have uh, improvement in accuracy, precision recall, F1 score um, also uh, improves, right? Um, so let me show you something uh, just to answer your question. Uh, so this is something uh, I have prepared. So this is the custom vision.ai. Uh, custom vision.ai is the, uh, there's some question on, on this on, uh, on, uh, on the chat from Srinivas. Uh, so, uh, so if you go to uh, customvision.ai, uh, this is again Microsoft service um, uh, that is po po posted on the top of the Azure machine learning uh, AML and cognitive service. So you can pretty much go and uh, build your own uh, uh, build your own uh, uh, own image uh, recognition uh, object detection or uh, or classification model, right? In this case, um, I have cats and dogs model, and uh, I have trained it on all of the cat and dog uh, data set from Kaggle. And uh, you know, you can in few buttons you can uh, train a model, and then uh, you can uh, uh, you can measure performance. Uh, so I can uh, training images, and I can look at performance of the model. Um, I can publish the model uh, out there, get the endpoint, uh, and also I can export the model uh, in various different uh, uh, methods. Right? It's very very quick. You don't need uh, you don't you don't have to be a data scientist even to build this type of models. Uh, similarly, Azure ML has similar situations, right? And then you can predict, right? You can predict also um, very, very well, right? Uh, so you can use the API and all of your queries will show up in the prediction. Uh, so what we did was you can just take this API here and then attack this model, right? And then have it adversarially respond, right? So that's, that's, what, that's what black box model is all about. And nowadays uh, we have tried all type of models on all services like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, we are able to attack all of them, um, the audio, NLP, and image models uh, very successfully. Adversarially, we are able to attack them. So uh, this threat is real and uh, yeah. So, so I hope I was able to answer your question. Yeah, there are more questions, I think. Yeah, there's another question on the chat. You might be able to read it. Um, all the examples yeah. do amount to image classification. What are examples uh, 
NLP, speech recognition, or other types of AI? Yeah, so there are, uh, there's, uh, there's um, a repository called Qt Data, I believe. That's what um, I like to use Bing over Google. Um, uh, so, I believe it's called Qt Data. Um, yeah, Qt Data. Uh, so Q data is, um, let me copy this link here. That's the NLP type of attacks. Uh, and definitely IBM's uh, adversarial uh, attacks. Um, <clears throat> uh, we call it ad adversarial toolkit, robustness toolbox. Uh, so that is the uh, IBM's uh, uh, repo here, uh, the GitHub repo. And uh, they have their own page here that you can uh, play around with um, adversarial. So you can get started here. And then uh, that takes you to the uh, repo repository, right? So this is the, all the notebooks uh, available, um, right? And uh, this is a repo. Let me send you the link to the repo. So th this has all, uh, it has voice, it has NLP, but this is a little old. So you can see uh, there are quite a lot of contribution, but. Um, the majority of them is like a year or two old. Um, uh, PyTorch have uh, also, PyTorch also have a model, uh, these attack uh, models and uh, they are a little more advanced. And also Google has clever hands. Uh, so all of them have uh, adversarial attack models and uh, defense is still very nascent uh, field right now. Um, there are not a lot of libraries out there for defense. Uh, but uh, the ones that Art, uh, this IBM Art has published uh, are quite exhaustive. So if you go to notebooks, you will see all the, even your cookie cutter models, your TensorFlow, scikit-learn models, uh, black box, white box attacks. These are all scikit-learn models. You have poisoning attacks. You have defenses, also uh, defense evaluation. Um, so you have all type of uh, attacks. But these are more like uh, textbook type of things. Uh, but uh, the possibilities are endless. Uh, we are also, the trust for the AI team at Microsoft, we are going to publish um, a tool uh, on GitHub next month. We call it counterfeit. Uh, the counterfeit is more uh, for vulnerability scanning. So let's say uh, Costco in uh, San Jose is getting breached with some kind of attacks and they will track, like they have a product, uh, Microsoft have a product called Azure Sentinel uh, that is for vulnerability scanning. So you are able to scan um, the, these models um, uh, being attacked across your supply chain and see the leakage. Uh, so uh, we are going to uh, release that service um, in April and open source the counterfeit. This is another um, side of things. The one we are working on is the shift left, which is more on defense. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so you're most welcome. Uh, uh, so I, I, hope, I hope I was able to answer that question uh, on the um, um, image class. Are there, yeah, NLP, speech recognition, uh, the IBM art, you will see all of them here. Uh, this is the audio example. You have uh, uh, NLP in the Q, uh, the Q data, right? The adversarial training, um, uh, attacks, uh, adjusted attacks. Uh, you have all the different type of attacks, finding threshold. So you can see here uh, NLP type of attacks, yes. Mm -hmm. um, there was another question, is there a correlation between model confidence and ability to defeat it? Um, again, confidence, uh, are, you, are you referring to accuracy or are you referring to um, uh, precision recall? Uh, I mean, again, it's very, uh, confidence and ability to defeat uh, doesn't have any correlation. Uh, doesn't have correlation. Um, yes, high accurate. I mean, you can attack any models with adversarial attack. It's just that how many queries you are affording, how much how much horsepower. It's like Bitcoin mining, right? So, how much horsepower you have? Uh, you have bigger horsepower. Uh, you can, uh, you know, um, nowadays a lot of uh, cluster evasion happen happening in Kubernetes clusters, people hijacking it and using it for this type of attack. So if you have a GPU cluster running Kubernetes, uh, if somebody just evade it and take it over and then start attacking other models inside that Kubernetes cluster and outside, uh, then they have almost unlimited power. 
uh, to attack, right? So uh, that we, we see that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no correlation uh, as such. Any model, high, highly accurate models, low accuracy models can be attacked. So um, any more questions? If not, then uh, I'll just uh, go into the slides and say thank you. OK. Thank you very much for speaking with us tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Bye. Goodbye.